could be a review in a lot of different ways. Can you go with us? We've graphed using standard, we've graphed using vertex, we've graphed using intercepts. And when you're graphing, you need to start with the vertex. So how did you find the vertex in standard form? From your test yesterday, but if it was like this, what how do you what do you do for your vertex? Negative B over two A. Good. And then you plug it back in, right? To get the Y value. So if we got the vertex here, lead me through it. What would I do? What numbers am I going to use? 16 over times, what is 16 over 2 times 4? 16 over 8, which equals 2. All right, so I know that the x coordinate of my vertex is 2. So then if I take this 2 and I plug it back in, I get 4 times 2 squared minus 16 times 2 plus 21. So that's 16 minus 32 plus 21. I get 5. And if we were going to graph this, we would put 2, 5 on our coordinates. And then we could use the 1, 3, 5 pattern with 4 to get the rest of the points. If this was what we were looking at, and instead of it being in standard form, if it was in vertex form, what would my vertex here be? How do I find the vertex? Opposite what's in parentheses, so H, and then what? K. Okay. So if I wanted my vertex here, it would be 2, 5. If it was in this form and it was factored, which is also called intercept form, how do I find my vertex? P and Q divided by 2. And then I plug it back in. So what numbers am I going to put up here for, if it's this example? 1 and negative 3, and then divide by 2. So that's negative 1. So I know I've got negative 1 for my x factor, or my x coordinate of my vertex. And if I plug it in here and here, get negative 1 minus 1, negative 1 plus 3. I have 2 times negative 2 times 2. 2 times negative 2 times 2 is a negative 8. And that's the vertex, and then I graph from there. This should be pretty solid in your mind, because it was just like yesterday we took the test over this. So that's how we find the vertex, and then we can graph from there. So if we're graphing, and we're using the graph to solve, then what's, what's going to happen is just like when we were graphing and we wanted to solve um, when it was linear lines. And if you remember, and this is going back to like December, so I get that it's been a while. If we were trying to graph like um, 6x plus 1, excuse me, equals uh, 29, one method would be to graph 6x plus 1. All right, we know it's going to be a line. It's going to go through the um, y-intercept of 1, so it's going to be like this. And then we would graph 29, and we would see where that intersection is. You guys vaguely remember something like that? Mm -hmm. So that idea that we used when we were graphing linear stuff, we're going to use when we're graphing quadratics. So instead of it looking like this, we're going to have something like x squared plus 2x plus 1 equals 0. This is going to be a parabola of some sort. And we'll graph it. And then this is always going to equal 0. So our answers are where our parabola equals 0. So we're basically looking for the x-intercept. And they would be the answers to this equation. And that's what it's telling us here. 
So we want to get the original equation to equal zero. Then we're going to graph the parabola using any method we need to. So standard form or vertex form or intercept form, depending on what it looks like. Once we graph it, we're going to find the x-intercepts. Those are going to be the solutions. For the same reason that where they intersected here when it was linear is the solution, where they intersect here, where it's a quadratic equaling zero, is going to be the solution. So if we look at this, we want it first to equal zero. So I'm going to subtract six on both sides. I get x squared plus 2x minus 8 equals zero. Now, when we were just learning how to graph this, I had it kind of walking you through. Find the vertex, what's the A value, what's the pattern. But hopefully, like, that's kind of second nature now. And you know that you need to do that. So we need to find the vertex. We need to find the A. We need to find the pattern. So to get our, my vertex here, talk to me. What do I need to do? Yep, it is standard form. Good. So I'm going to do... Negative b over 2a. What's negative b? Over 2, what's a? So negative 2 over 2 is negative 1. There's negative 1. Then I plug it back in, so I get negative 1 squared plus 2 times negative 1 minus 8. So 1 minus 2 minus 8. Negative 9. Did I do that right? Yeah. Negative 9. What's my A value? 1. What's my pattern? One, three, five, and then you're timesing by 1, so it's that. So if we graph this, negative 1, negative 9 is right there. So up 1, up 3, up 5. We have that axis of symmetry. So then 1 on the other side, 2 on the other side, 1, 2, 3 on the other side. Let's graph it. So before, if it equaled like y at the end, if this equaled y, we'd just graph it. Well, if it's equaling 0, we want to know the values of x that make it equal 0. So it's going to be negative 4 and 2. All right. So find the x-intercepts. That's your answer. By the way, there's a method to my madness here. This equation was the very first one that we solved using the quadratic formula. Like once we got it equal to zero, x squared plus 2x minus 8, x squared plus 2x minus 8, our answers were 2 and negative 4. 2 and negative 4. All right. So we solved this problem two different ways today. We did the quadratic formula, and we could have just it's going to depend on, yeah, you can always use one. Say it again. Depends on your A. Depends on your A. Yep. All right. So in the second example. Oh, yep, go on. Say it again. Yeah, I it don't worry about it. Okay. So here, if we're doing the graphing method, it always has to be zero. So I'm going to subtract eight, and I'm graphing two times the quantity of x plus five squared minus eight. Because if I'm solving by graphing, you always have to start at equaling zero. Mm -hmm. 
so I'm going to subtract 8 on both sides. And I can't, I, those aren't like terms, because the oh, 2 is a... Oh, okay. But now, this is vertex form. All right, do you guys see it in vertex form? So what's my vertex? So it might not say, hey, this is vertex form, but you hopefully are at the point now that you've seen it and you can just pick up like, oh, I could do vertex form. And then to graph with vertex form, we need an A value. What's my A? So what's my pattern? So we're going to multiply that 135 by 2. You get 2, 6, 10. So negative 5, negative 8 goes to here. Okay. The 2, 6, 10, so up 2 over 1, up 6 over 1, up 10 over 1. Got your axis of symmetry. Axis of symmetry always goes through the vertex like we've talked about. So 1 to the right goes 1 to the left, 2 to the right, 2 to the left, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. So make my parabola. And since it equals 0, we want to know the values that crosses the axis because that's where it's 0. So what are those values? Negative 7 and negative 3. By the way, this problem where we solved by taking the square root was 2x plus 5 quantity squared minus 8 equals 0. So we solved this algebraically by taking the square root, and the answers we got were negative 3 and negative 7. Negative 3 and negative 7. So it's just two different ways to solve this problem. Today we're looking at solving by graphing instead of doing it algebraically. If we look at this one, this is our, what form is this? Uh, wait, so wasn't that already in? It's already in a form. What form is it? Um, Intercept form, right? But what is the coordinate between both the positive one and positive three? And wouldn't that be out of that? Yeah. So that's the answer? Well, it wants you to graph it, so it wants, technically wants you to see the vertex yeah, and all that. But you don't really need it, yeah. So, that, so, it's like one so then the question becomes, sometimes it's easier to look at it and be like, oh, my answer is one and three. You just did it algebraically using the zero product property rather than graphing it. Well, yeah. If we... I mean, technically, if it's telling you to solve by graphing and it wants to know the x-intercepts and we know the x-intercepts, I guess it's kind of extra to do that. Wouldn't be bad so practice. Um, it would be kind of silly of me to be like, hey, graph this when it's so quick to just do that. But I mean, it's kind of it, I mean, it's a good idea to see where it's coming from. So let's do it for now, but if I if I ask a test question and you just told me the answers because you know that that's how to do that really quickly. So how would you continue that though? So if we continued it, our P and our Q, our x-intercepts, are 1 and 3. If we divided by 2, that would give us 2. So for our vertex. It would be 2. Plug it back in. 3 times 2 minus 1 times 2 minus 3. We have 3 times 1 times negative 1 to equal negative 3. So 2 negative 3 is right there.
this last one. Remember to make sure that it equals 0. So what am I going to do? Minus 3. So you get x squared minus 9 equals 0. This to me looks like vertex form. Because I don't have an x term, I can just look at it and think vertex form. So what's subtracting your x before it's squared? Zero. Right? What's at the end of it? Remember vertex form is that a times x minus h squared plus k. So this is vertex form. Right? This is vertex form. You don't see vertex form here? No. Okay. This x squared term is this term right here. The k is the negative 9. Do you see that part? That the k is the negative 9? So I could rewrite x squared here as 1 times x minus 0 quantity squared. Nothing is subtracting my x before it's squared, so it's just x squared, and I have one of them. So vertex is 0, negative 9. If you would rather think about this as being standard form, this is like option 1. If you wanted to think, okay, that's standard form, then it would be the same as x squared plus 0x minus 9 equals 0. And if you did negative b, it would be negative 0 over 2 times a, which is 1, which would be negative 0, which is the same as positive 0, which is the same as not needing a sign. If I put 0 back in, I would get negative 9. So it's how you see it. I think vertex form is easier to see that, okay, Here's my x squared. Nothing is subtracting my x before I square it. The thing at the end is negative 9. If I did my pattern, though, my a value, what's my a value here? 1. So my pattern is 1, 3, 5. 0, negative 9 will be here. Up 1, up 3, up 5. That's my line of symmetry. We here, 1, 2, here, here. What are my intercepts for what x equals? Negative 3. So sometimes it's nice to graph and solve. Sometimes, like, I think you probably liked doing this probably better than the quadratic formula. Am I right there? Sometimes, like this, you probably liked doing vertex form and finding the intercepts instead of solving by square rooting, right? It doesn't. You can solve it like this, or you can graph it. If it's intercept form, I think it makes more sense to just answer it rather than graph it. This one, personally, as like, I don't know, somebody that does this for a living, I wouldn't have graphed this one. What I would have done is think, okay, x squared minus 9, that's the difference of squares. Remember when we factored it and it looked like this? And then I would have had the opposite. This is now intercept form, 3 and negative 3. So there's several different methods for you to solve. We've got quadratic, factoring, square root, and now graphing.
So it asks you to graph each of these in order to get those values. Right? So look at this. Remember, they always have to equal zero before you start them. And number three, just by looking at it, you're going to have to extend this. You're not going to be able to graph on that grid that it gives you. You're going to have to go down a few more and make your grid longer. And I can already tell what the answer is. There. And you should be able to. X squared equals 16. What's that? What number squared is 16? Four. Four. So like I said, some of them are kind of silly to, to solve by graphing. And sometimes it's, let's just skip that one. Let's don't solve that by graphing. The square root, and then you can get your answer real quick. Skip number three. Yeah. And that's a dumb one to graph, but solve by graphing. Because it's the square root, and then you get your answer. Five with you? Sure. Number five is in volts. If you look at it. What are we going to do to start here? Add five. Add five. So we've got negative 3x squared minus 24x minus, if I add five, minus 36 equals zero. So you're, if I'm graphing, this is standard form. How do I find the vertex? So negative b would be 24 over 2a. What's a? Negative 3. So you get 24 over negative 6, which equals negative 4. So remember, when we do that negative b over 2a, that's the value of your, the x value of your vertex. When we plug it back in, this negative 4 is going to go back in here. So it's negative 3 times negative 4 squared minus 24 times negative 4 minus 36. So I'm going to go up a little bit to get that negative 412 right here. My axis of symmetry will be like that. If it's negative 412 for my vertex, now I need the A value. What's my A value? Negative 3. So what's my pattern? 1, 3, 5 times a negative 3. Get negative 3, negative 9, negative 15. If I go down 3, I'm at 12, so down 3 will be 9. Down 9 will be 2. Down 15 will be off the page. So what are my values? Right.